Well, welcome to this ground level leaders conference. Uh, my name is Nathan Benger and after our sessions, we're going to be putting together a few videos and I am with the greatest Paul and Perianne Brownback. Oh, and, thank you. Uh, so good to, to be together. And uh, we're just jumping off the back of a session uh, that we've done a discussion around digging deeper wells. And Perianne has her notes ready. Oh, <laughs> I... You, was... you got the mickey, as we say in England, the yes. mickey taken out of you for having Form. paper notes. But paper tell us, tell us, what, tell us what everyone else had. They had phones. Yeah. They were quite capable of placing notes on their phones. So I just got the greed for having it on paper. Yeah. Uh, but well, what you brought, both of you, <clears throat> was real gold. And so we thought we'd just grab a few of those kind of headlines, really. And we were looking at the idea of healthy leadership and what that begins to look like in this season and we were thinking about the season we've just been through and how that's helped develop healthy leadership but maybe we could just start with what you feel uh, God has been saying throughout this past season. Well I think healthy leadership is of the utmost right now. I mean really has there ever been any other kind? Mm. So what's actually happened is a mirror has been held up to where we are. Um, I remember a semi-obscure art movement called Dadaism. Have you ever heard of that? Never. It's bizarre, <laughs> absurd art. And Christians love to make fun of it because they think it's all messing with reality. But in fact, what those artists were doing was trying to hold up a mirror to society to say, hey, you're messed up. And so I think in some ways, maybe the pandemic has held up a bit of a mirror. But we have a great God who wants to restore the health yeah. and bring the health. And actually, he specializes in health. We've mm -hmm. just lost sight of that. So yeah. I kind of welcome the mirror that forces us to dig deeper wells. It's yeah. kind of like one of those funny mirrors in the circus. Yeah. That everything's oh, distorted yeah. and out of shape. And, and I think in a lot of ways, the church has become that in, mm -hmm. our, in relationship to the culture. Things are out of shape. We've had a lot of emphasis. Mm -hmm good on leadership, but it's been more focused on organizational leadership, mm -hmm. not spiritual leadership. Yeah. And I think personal the, wells. You yeah. Might say. And yeah. yeah. And our culture is holding up a mirror saying we need more. Yeah. We don't need just great organizations or success and mm -hmm. vision and growth. Those are good, but we really need the heart, the foundation of, to right. know who God is, his character, mm -hmm. his goodness, that there yeah. really is a God who cares. Yeah. And so I think we're being called back to a lot of our roots, Amazing. really, and yeah. to rediscover and then reflect mm. the real nature of God, that he loves yeah. people and he cares deeply mm. and he wants to be with us in any and every mm. condition or situation we're walking through. Mm. Just, just jumping off the back of that, Paul, you mentioned going back to our roots and um, thinking about church history. And I know one of the questions that really struck a chord, actually, with quite a lot of people was around this church history and this whole history of Christianity, some of the rhythms, but the things that have happened through church history informing us and helping us to have that relationship with God. I wonder if you could just jump on and talk maybe around the rhythms, but also that thought of church history informing our relationship That's with God. Really good, yeah. yeah, I think that we are in a cycle again, mm -hmm. not unlike um, when Constantine became a Christian mm -hmm. and Christianity suddenly became the state religion. Mm -hmm. And you had a flood of people come into the church, but the church suddenly was no longer the church. Mm -hmm. And so you, out of that, you had a number of leaders called the Desert Fathers mm -hmm. say, we've got to continue or we have to hold on to our spirituality and not just become a political movement. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so they established uh, monastic living. Mm -hmm. They retreated to silence, solitude, mm -hmm. prayer, stillness in order to know God. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're in a season like that again that we're, we have to, it's one, one thing to have production, like when the pandemic started, everybody became a tele-evangelist. Everybody went online. We all had to learn how to do this. We did. Yes. We had to learn how to do this. And that's yes. not wrong. That's good. It reaches people. But 
this will never replace the reality yeah. of mm. knowing him, mm. knowing his presence, mm. hearing his voice. And that requires, may require or does require that personal, private, setting aside the agenda, yeah. becoming silent with him to hear his voice, mm. becoming still, not just doing the business of church. Mm. And yeah. being alone right. and not being dependent upon the organization mm -hmm. to make everything happen. Yeah. And I think so much of this is not as complicated as we make it. Mm -hmm. I think we don't realize how much he really wired us to be loved and flow yeah. in yeah. who we really are. Yeah. And so the, my answer, ironically, to that one, that uh, there, there were so many good answers. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a time to share this, but... This is actually a modern concept that, for me, informs who was successful in church yeah. history. So I think in the 70s-ish, there came out this whole discussion of flow state. Yeah. At you as an yeah, athlete, yeah. Would, it's like the zone. Yeah. And there's a, there's a simple little graph that has two axes like this, and the zone in the middle is flow state. And I believe God created us for flow state. To be empowered by Him and authentically who we are is flow state. And it's also defined as becoming one with your task. Yeah. And you actually lose consciousness of time mm -hmm. because you're so engrossed. Just in and the zone. You're in the zone. In the zone. Exactly. Like yeah. the athlete sees the play. Yeah. So the two on this little graph, there's flow state in the middle. Mm -hmm. And the, this axis is challenge and this axis is skill. So if you're highly skilled and under challenged, you're bored. Yeah. But if you're highly challenged and under skilled, you're anxious. Yeah. And one day I was, I, that helped me a lot mm. because I realized God wants me in the flow channel. Yeah. So I have to, I have to look back in church history and realize I think they wouldn't have used these terms, no. but I think they got themselves in this flow state, which mm. is really mission and purpose. It's destiny. Mm. But I also think you can overlay grace and faith wow. on those axes because yeah. I think faith goes with challenge. Yeah, yeah. So God wants you to be challenged to where mm. you are leaning into faith. Mm. But at the same time, that skill axis is grace. Yeah. And you've got to know that you're enough. You've got to know, and I think people in church history, got it settled that they're enough. So yeah. we do have to exercise faith. We always will. Yeah. But if you lose the concept that you're adequate, yeah. then you're just in a comparison game, and yeah. that's what makes emotional yeah. health go out the window. I, lo I love that picture of the flow state. And um, I just wonder, for people practically, how, how do you know and personally how do you get in that flow state mm. so because you know in our in our movement mm -hmm. you know movement of churches faith is the thing mm -hmm. let's have the big faith mm -hmm. you know big hairy audacious faith yes. yeah you know let's Shocking go for the faith. big yeah all of that yeah um but many times that seems so far away mm -hmm. and we miss out on living in the grace of god but marry i love that picture of just marrying the two but i wonder if there are some spiritual disciplines, spiritual rhythms that actually help us to stay in that flow I, I state. I think that's abs the main thing I would say, and you probably come in with some specifics, but is believing that it's for you. Because mm. I think religion is what robs us from it. Yeah. Religious ideas that we're not suffering enough mm. in leadership or yeah, you know yeah. something like yeah. that. I'm not believing you know. Exactly. Not going far and enough. and it's yeah. comparison and religion yeah. and those things. So I think I would say the big picture thing is believing that God wants this for you. Mm. This we're not talking about just an ease like yeah, it's chill, I'm not yeah, trying. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about actually flowing in destiny and purpose and you learn to recognize when you're falling into one of those yeah. edges. But then there are probably specific disciplines as well then. well yeah i think that uh you know I, I just go back to jesus and you know he had the masses following him. yeah he had demands being put on him and he spent hours you know he fed the five thousand right after he fed the five thousand and having taught having healed the sick he escaped if you will he went away to a solitary place mm -hmm. um, on mount transfiguration what did he do he took a couple disciples with him, went up to a mountain, yeah, very good. and there he fellowshiped mm. with Elijah and with Moses, which mm. is the, the law and the prophets. Mm. And that reinforced his identity. That reinforced his very grace. Yeah, yeah. So coming down off the mountain requires the demand of faith. So demands mm. are put on you. When he mm. came off that mountain, he had the... Um, 
blind and deaf boy that needed to be healed that the disciples couldn't. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think that, that being on the mountain, being in fellowship with, with the Word, yeah. mm-hmm. reminds us of our identity, who yeah, God right. is in, the, in us, who we are in Him, yeah. to reinforce that grace mm-hmm. so that then we step into the faith demand mm-hmm. and we are able to say, not I'm enough, but He's enough. Yeah. He's enough in wow. me and through me. I, like we're just scratching the surface of yeah. what we talked about really um, but I wonder if there's just one thing that you would uh, say to leaders around this idea of digging deeper wells spiritual rhythms emotionally healthy leadership just just one thing that could encourage them today yeah um, I, we have this saying at the Abbey that has meant so much to us especially through the pandemic mm-hmm is uh, you know that there's a definition of peace that's nothing missing, nothing broken. Yeah, yeah. We added nothing wasted and no one left behind. Very good. And I that nothing wasted to me is the crux of that. And I think a lot of us have some disappointments mm-hmm. because it's like the Lord showed us things. We've seen mm-hmm. the future we thought yeah. and then the future went tanked. Everyone had that 2020 vision. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes exactly. <laughs> but the... I'm, I'm living now more than ever in the concept that nothing is wasted. Go, yeah. And just even in the cycle of life, anything goes through a cycle of death mm. and resurrection again yeah. and again. So I think uh, it's so trite, but our best days are yet to come because there's a recycling of yeah. these disappointments, but in a better form Amazing. than we thought. Yeah. 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 I agree 100%. And I think what helps me know how nothing's wasted is to live in the question. Mm. Mm. To be able in situations where I'm disappointed mm. or I'm overwhelmed, to be able to lean into the question, um, well, Lord, how do you? What are you trying to teach me in this mm. situation? If this isn't going to be wasted, yeah. what am I to learn? Mm. What am I to? What revelation do I need? Yeah. Uh, what do I need to hear? Mm. Where are you? Who are yeah, you yeah. in this situation? Let me know you. In this moment of my own failure, let me know you in a way that I've never known you before. Mm. Obviously, I need to know you more. I need to know you better. Mm. I need to know your goodness. Or I wouldn't have the emotions I have. It doesn't mean I would have even had success, but I wouldn't feel the way I feel about it. So I need to know his goodness, his character in a way I haven't. And so to lean into those questions and take time to sit in those questions... Mm. And then that opens my hearing mm. and, and realizing it's not yeah. going to be wasted if I'm transformed, if I grow yeah. out of this, then we may have lost 10000 you know, $50,000 in mm. a bad decision, but I grew. Mm. So the next time around, I'm going to be more ready yeah. and I'll be more equipped. If I can throw one thing in yeah. super quick. This, while you were talking, this came to me. Um, I heard a preach once about how Jesus' parents lost him in the temple. And I just felt impressed that, you know, sometimes you're so busy doing church and managing church, it's okay to admit, hey, I might have lost Jesus for a minute in the temple. Mm. Like, that is part of the story. And when you rediscover him, it's always better. Mm. That's how it's nothing wasted. So it just seemed to me that there's people in this time that feel shame, like, Mm. I lost Jesus in, yeah. in the work of the ministry. <laughs> There's no shame. No, 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 no shame at no, all in that. No. We're all in it together. Yeah. Well, it's been great to have this chat. And like I said, we're only scratching the surface yeah. of that discussion. Um, but uh, yeah, just a big thank you to both of you. And uh, thanks for watching and look out for more interviews coming up from our Ground Level Leaders Conference.